Thanks for joining us again here at Beadaholic. Today I want to show you how to prepare images in your bezel settings, which you will then fill with resin. You have a wide array of various bezel shapes available to you on the market. A lot of them are very fun shapes like hearts and bottle caps, and then you also have more traditional shapes like rectangles and squares. Some are one-sided, you'll see it's flat on the other side, and some are actually two-sided. Once you've chosen your bezel setting, you will then need to find an image to put into it. There's a lot of wonderful collage sheets available for you, and what's nice is if you are using a Patera finding such as this one, it is actually specifically sized, the collage images, to fit exactly into your bezel shape. And they've actually gone one step further, and there is a hole punch, which is the exact size, to punch out that image, which will then fit into your setting. So you can go that route, or you can go ahead and print something off the computer, use an old photograph. Really the sky's the limit. Any paper good is going to work to fit into your setting. So what I want to do is I want to use this little bottle cap. A little trick with bottle caps is that the interior diameter is almost the size of a U.S. quarter. So that's a really great guideline, so I can actually just trace this quarter. So I'm going to take a collage sheet. And you can tell there's actually not an image that's the exact size for my bottle cap. That's fine. I'm going to take this little lady right here, and I'm going to cut her out. Set aside the rest of my sheet. You can tell, of course, she's not a circle shape. So I'm going to cut the top so I have a guideline to work with. And then I'm going to line. It's a little hard to see on camera, but I can faintly see through the paper. I want her head centered. I'm just going to put my quarter on there. I'm going to take a pencil, and it's important that you use a pencil. I'll show you in a moment why. And I'm just going to cut it out. Now I'm going to see how it fits into my setting. It feels just about perfect. So now you're going to need to glue her into place. I have none design glue right here. You can use any glue that you want. A good white glue is what you're looking for. Now you can use a paintbrush or you can use your fingers. Personally, I like using my fingers. So I've got a pad of paper right here. Flip her over, and what's important when you're coating the back side with glue is you really want to make sure you go to all the edges, and that's really why I like using my finger. I just feel like I have a little bit more control. But you can use a paintbrush. Just wash it out after you've used it. You can reuse it again. I'm just going to set her down. And I'm going to go around the edge with my finger and press her into place. Trying to get out any air bubbles. I'm also trying to just make sure that she's tightly bonded with the setting. Now I'm going to let her dry for about 10 minutes. I just want to make sure that that glue is totally dry before I go on to the next step. All right, my setting is now dry and now I need to do a top coat. So I have a couple choices. I can use a sealant. Now, Nun Design Sealant is a great option uh, because it works well with inkjet printers, so it won't cause your ink to run. I'm sure you've had experiences where you've put a sealer on top of a printed piece of paper off of your printer and the colors have bled and run. So this is going to actually prevent that from happening. So this is a really good option if you're going to go ahead and use something that you've printed yourself at home. Another option you have is Mod Podge. This is a really good option as well for that top coat. For this particular project, I am going to go ahead and use Mod Podge. I'm going to pour a little bit on my paper. And this time I am going to use a paintbrush. I'm going to show you why. So when you are going to coat your image, you want to go around the edges. You want to make sure that those edges are sealed because otherwise your resin is going to seep underneath your paper and cause discolorization. So I always go around the edges first. And then I go into the middle. If you do a little bit of a cross pattern, it'll help to reduce the amount of streaks you have. I 
actually feel like I have a little too much on my paintbrush there, so I just wiped it off. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry and I'll come back and I'm going to do a second coat and perhaps even a third coat and I'm going to show you why. So over here, I have some examples of resin filled bottle cap settings I've already done. With the little girl here, this is a Renoir painting. It was just printed off of the computer. You can tell it's rather thin paper. And you can see how bright she is to begin with in her original form. Now, in this first one, I actually didn't put a sealer on top. So I glued the paper into the bottle cap and then I put the resin directly on top of it. There was not another layer like Mod Podge or sealant. And look at how dark she became. Now she is perfectly even in her colorization, which is really important. So that is one option to you. Now remember I said you'd wanna go ahead and use a pencil. If you look closely around her edge, you can tell that I actually used a pen to trace the quarter. And then that pen, that blue pen I used actually seeped through to the top. So that's why you wanna use a pencil. Now in the second one, I put one layer of sealant over and look how muddled she is. You can tell that her face is kind of blotchy. So when you are going to use a sealer or Mod Podge, you want to do at least two, perhaps even three court coats. So here's another example. Here is an image from the Paris collage sheet. You can tell that it's quite a bit darker than here's the original image and here's this image. You can see the colorization has darkened quite a bit. You can also see that blue pen coming through but it's very even. So this is a great antique look. So it is an option. It's not something you want to just discredit right away and think, oh, I'm always going to seal it because it is kind of nice sometimes to have that real vintage look. Now here I used one coat of Mod Podge and you can tell it is blotchy. And on this one, I actually used two coats. It's a much more even finish. There is still one little spot where the resin darkened the paper. So I would actually recommend doing three coats. Here's a couple other examples. Here was an image I did and I sealed it with sealant and you can see that it did streak through a little bit. It works with this particular collage that I did, um, but it's not ideal. And that was one coat. Now here's a little lady that very similar to the one we just cut out and did. And she was actually coated with two coats. You can tell there's one tiny, tiny little spot, um, but overall it's pretty even. Here's another example of two coats and there's no spotting at all. Before we conclude, I want to just give you one more tip. Never fill your bezels with resin until your sealant, your Mod Podge, your glue is totally dry. You see how there's that little white film? And that's of course because the Mod Podge is not dry yet. If I was to put resin on top of this right now, that would actually be sealed in there and would remain permanently white. It might even cloud your resin. So you just want to make sure it's completely dry. Be patient, you'll be a lot happier with the results in the end. And we do show you in another Beetaholic instructional video how to mix your resin, pour it, and finish it. Thanks for joining us.